Welcome to tonight's webinar, The Humanity and Deity of Christ, part one of two. And as I said, tonight we're going to focus on the humanity part of Christ. And let's just quickly overview the purpose of a webinar to set expectations. First, we're going to provide hands-on, real-time live training for Logos Bible software. Second, we're going to provide training so you can take this topic and study it for yourself even further after the webinar is over. Number three, we're going to provide biblical insights along the way related to the topic. And number four, we're going to provide materials if you purchase the webinar so you can equip yourself and others. Now with every webinar now, we include a personal book and that is the complete details and notes that I will be using tonight. So for example, here we have the introduction. You can see we have 11 parts and uh, all the notes are here. We have collections that are built in it. You can copy and paste. We have links to the books and resources that we'll be recommending. The searches are all outlined with a click. So it makes using the webinar that much more effective and that much easier with the personal book. So you'll enjoy that very much. Now tonight's outline, we're right now doing the introduction opening. We'll spend a few minutes looking at recommended but not required resources. Uh, I believe that it's great to add books to your library for specific topics that you're interested in. But the same token, part of the training here is to help you get the most out of the existing library that you already have. And we'll show you how to do both. We're going to teach you how to organize your notes to list Jesus' human attributes. Then we're going to focus on finding key passages referencing Jesus' humanity. We'll look at some theological issues and we'll look at the history of how people have argued throughout the history of the church about the true humanity of Christ. And we can learn about the errors that others made so that we don't make those mistakes when we share who Christ is. We'll show you how to look at the chronological life of Christ. We'll even do some special image searching. And then we'll show you how to do some uh, passages. We'll give you some key passages for deeper study. And then look at, uh, consider some meditations, why Jesus had to be fully man. This is so critical and one of the things that makes him unique as a savior. And then we'll uh, teach you how to search catechisms, which spend a lot of time talking about the humanity of Jesus. And then number 11, we'll look at some other related topics for further study when you want to go beyond this topic or go deeper and more fuller. Just a quick reminder that the webinar is available for download for $4.99 and uh, normally retails for $9.99. And then also, if you don't have the Logos Bundle Training, I so highly recommend this. This really is the foundation. The webinars are designed to focus on a topic, go in depth in particular areas, but we never cover the whole program. Uh, the training DVDs not only covers all the program, but we teach you about the books in your library. We teach you about books you can add to your library. And most importantly, where all the other training videos out there that stop, we go even further, making us the most comprehensive training on the planet. We're going to teach you how to use Logos to study the Bible. And it's a step-by-step. -step. We're going to help you create layouts, create set special collections. Uh, it's an incredible value uh, at you know anywhere from $45 to $50 with that 50% off. Just visit learnlogos.com forward slash buy now and you can get that information. Now we have some uh, webinars coming up uh, with the rest of the year. Closing up, we'll have a new schedule uh, pretty soon for 2014 and we're going to be mixing up. We're going to uh, do some really neat things. So I'm excited for that. So tonight we're doing the first part, studying the humanity of Christ. Then uh, Thursday, December 3rd, so two weeks from today, studying the deity of Christ. We'll look at the other side. And then we're going to have a special uh, Christmas special, 1210. And then uh, on 1217, I think, we're going to do a Q&A session where it's just kind of a free-for-all. Uh, you come and you ask your questions and uh, we'll, we'll, take, we'll take every question as best we can and answer them live. So if there's things about Logos you've always wondered how to use or just uh, anything that you want to know about the program, uh, we're going to take those questions and, and do that. And we'll record that and make that available as well. So very excited to bring that to you. All right, let's get started. Let's look at some recommended but not required resources. This is really important to study this topic because there is uh, quite a bit of information out there, but you have to know where to find it. Now, just to get us started with some great searching, I'm going to show you a special search to help you discover 
books and articles that you already have in your library that teach you about the humanity of Christ. So I'm gonna take my personal book, and this works with any resource that you have open in your window. If you go up to the tab area, and that's right up here, uh, this, this section right here is the tab, and you right click on that and choose the first menu option, open in a floating window, you can then take that book and you can move it. So if you have a second or third monitor, this will allow you to free up some space and move the book off to another screen so you can free up another screen to do whatever you need to do. So let's go ahead now and let's do a search. We're gonna search our whole library to discover articles and, uh, and anything on the humanity of Christ. So let's go to the top menu and let's choose search. That's the magnifying glass there, search. And then notice you've got several options over here. And depending on what version of Logos you have, you could have up to six of these. And we wanna choose basic. Think of basic as kind of the all book search. And next to it is the Bible, which is all Bible search. Now, the next thing we need to do is make sure our settings are set properly. So we have all text and we have entire library. That's what you wanna have set. Now, in the search box, we need to put in something very specific. All right, so follow along. I'm gonna type in the phrase large text. Then I'm gonna follow it with a colon and then in quotes, because I'm using a phrase, anytime you use a phrase, you wanna put it in quotes, humanity of Christ. And then I'm gonna put one more or large text again with a colon incarnation. Now, let me explain what the large text is doing. And I'll go ahead and press enter so you can start having your program look for some searches and get some search results. Now, the large text is very specific type of search. We don't wanna just look for a passing reference of the phrase humanity of Christ or incarnation. We wanna look for articles that are all about the humanity of Christ and incarnation. And the way Logos has tagged the books is they've used a special phrase, large text. So you're gonna find this, for example, here, the perfect humanity of Christ incarnate. That one had both. And if we click on that first link from Ryrie's Basic Theology, you'll see that the table of, not the table of contents, but the, the heading is in large text which means everything that's gonna follow is going to be about the humanity of Christ. And as you can see here, look at this, the perfect humanity of Christ incarnate. He had a human body. He had a human soul and spirit. He exhibited the characteristics of a human being. He was called by human names. Now this is, this is a very powerful search and can show you what articles already exist in your library. So before you run out and you get a new book, hey, let's take advantage of the information you already have in your library. And by the way, if you go over to the right, there's a little triangle, let me circle that for you. And if you click on that triangle, you'll see that Logos is keeping track of various searches that you run. And eventually, it, uh, you know, it only keeps so many, I think it's like 100 of them, uh, maybe 50 to 100, somewhere in that range. So if you forget, let's say tomorrow you get up and you're like, oh, I wanna run that search again, since you ran it tonight, it'll be there for yesterday, in the yesterday list and so forth. So we have Tuesday, Monday, and uh, quite a bit there. So the last few days. So that's very helpful. All right, now let's go ahead and close down this search and this book, and let's begin to look at some resources that you can get. And this one is actually titled, in fact, let me just go to the very top, Good Tidings of Great Joy, Christ's Incarnation, the Foundation of Christianity. Now, just give you an example, uh, the style and writing of Charles Spurgeon here. If you're not familiar with him, uh, he's known as the uh, Prince of Preachers and he's an amazing uh, preacher and writer. So we have here to the shepherds, the angel said, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And truly the angelic message is still the source of joy to all here at all right. Unto you is born a savior. And then as you can see, he goes in and he begins to talk about Christ's incarnation. So this is very narrative, they're short devotionals, but it's all to get you to meditate on Christ's incarnation. So take advantage of that resource. In fact, let me go ahead and bring in the browser and Logos is carrying that for 995. All right, the next one, let me go here, is Francis Hall. And notice this is part of a collection of Dogmatic Theology, volume six. So this single resource is devoted to the incarnation. Now, don't forget over at the right, you have this little option under recommendations. So whenever you click on a book link, always look at the right to see if Logos has this part of a greater collection that you wanna take advantage of. 
and that's really important uh, especially if you want to save some money and don't forget you may need to click on the more button to see where else it's included or to find similar books uh, similar resources but found in the appearance of a man he humbled himself by being obedient to the point of death even death on the cross so there we have the old testament the new testament predicted jesus humanity and the new testament of Affirms his humanity. Now, how did I find some of these passages? Well, let me give you some tips. The word lamb is a key word uh, in finding the humanity of Christ because the lamb, right, is the sacrifice and the picture of the Passover lamb. But the lamb of God is Christ, and by him shedding his blood, the shedding of blood is a human thing. Therefore, that connects us to the humanity of Christ. So I've got a simple search here. Just do a search of your favorite Bible, search for lamb, and you can begin to find all the passages dealing with the lamb of God. So neat. And look how it says lamb of God, meaning this is God's lamb and uh, speaks to the humanity of Christ. Now this is really important. Notice that uh, I wanna do something specific to this search. So go up to the top left in your search panel called the resource panel if you click on it. And you want to do match case when you search for lamb. Notice that I have a capital L. That is to ensure that I only find lambs that are capitalized. So by only finding the capitalized lambs, in the case of the New American Standard, those are all referencing Jesus Christ. So it's a way of kind of distinguishing between small L, uh, four-footed animal lamb, versus large L, uh, two-footed Christ, our Lord and Savior lamb. Okay, now once you've done this search, make sure you go back in there and you uncheck it by simply unchecking it once uh, or just choosing match all word forms. Both will get you there. So if you leave it on, you're going to limit your search results because it's going to be case sensitive and you're going to miss a whole bunch of cross references. The next phrase is the man Christ Jesus. Now, there's only a couple, actually one, 1 Timothy 2, 5, and that emphasizes the humanity of Christ. And why, this is like the definitive passage of why Jesus had to be a man, which Job was crying out for. For there's one God and one mediator also between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Without Christ being fully man, he could not represent us fully, and that is the key. The next one is the phrase son of man. Now, there's quite a few of these, and not every one of them, uh, the way the search runs, it's Old Testament and New Testament. So you might want to choose all passages and just say New Testament, and you'll get most of the phrases referring to Christ. So again, that whole phrase, son of man, is appealing to Christ's humanity and his humiliation. But it was an honor that he felt to take this on. So don't misunderstand this. When God created man before, you know, uh, created man, he was made in the image of God. And in their innocence, they were, as God said at the end of Genesis chapter one, and he looked at all creation and he said it was very good. Christ has come to redeem man, to put him back into a relationship with God the Father so that man can be in that position once again, holy and set apart, able to serve and worship and praise God. Now, the next key phrase is seed or descendant of David, seed and descendant of Abraham. Those are two phrases. Notice in this particular search, I have gone in and added the Greek. And the reason I did that, depending on your translation, they may not use the same word for seed or descendant, sometimes generation or whatever the translation is. So uh, now how did I do that? So what I'm gonna do is show you real quick. I'm gonna open up my Bible, move it over here to the right. I'll just pick the first uh, passage, Luke 155. And it takes a couple steps to do this. So let me open up a new search window. Let me show you a little trick. This is pretty handy. If you hold down the control button on any tab and you left click on that tab while the control button is down and drag, it'll open up the exact duplicate of that window. It's like a clone feature. So you hold down the control button, left click while holding the control button, drag it over, and that will essentially clone the tab. And you can see here, another duplicate. So let me show you what I did here. So I wanted to get descendants, the underlying Greek word. So I right click on descendants, I locate the lemma, choose lemma, and I do search this resource. Then what I do is I 
Control X, basically cut, go back to my original window and I paste it in there. And I just hit the word OR in all capital letters. And I just worked this way until I got all the keywords for seed and for descent and for Abraham, for David. That way, my search is not dependent upon the English, but is actually searching the underlying Greek. And so you can see that here. In fact, let me expand that a little bit. And so here we go. We've got the different words for descendant, for generation, for seed, etc. So very powerful search built into the personal book for you when you download it and uh, purchase the webinar. And that will give you access to the specialized search. Another key phrase is Jesus and flesh. Now this search is a little unique. I typed in flesh, then I used in all capital letters the word near, then space in parentheses Jesus comma Christ. By putting two or more words in parentheses separated by a comma or more than one comma, you're telling the Logos search engine to do the following. You're saying search for flesh near Jesus and then continue to search for flesh near Christ. So it allows you to create a very simple search, but is a very powerful search because we're looking for all these combinations. So anytime you want a list of things, put them in parentheses, separate them with commas, and you are good to go. And, um, and Sylvia had a, just a great little comment. You are so welcome. Uh, this is an eye-opening. And as I study this, I just continue to, to be amazed at God and his solution to our sin and yet his willingness uh, to humble himself and to be like us. I mean, you probably have heard this illustration. Um, you know, it's a great illustration for kids or grandkids if you want to kind of communicate this idea that God became a man. And you, and, and you probably have heard this before. It says, you know, you're telling your child, say, hey, how, you know, you're looking on the road and you see all these ants. And uh, you say, you know, let's say there's a fire. How would you warn the ants that a fire was coming? And the child, through the reasoning and your coaching and helping, could probably guide them to say, well, if you became an ant, then you could talk to the ant. <laughs> and that's exactly, in a sense, what Jesus has done, right? We are the ant when you consider the, the incredible uniqueness and power of our God who has created the stars and the heavens. And uh, we are truly like ants. And yet, he comes, loves us, and dies for us. And uh, so it's just the humiliation of God uh, and his humility is just absolutely amazing. All right, now, going forward, uh, we need to identify the human attributes of Jesus. Now, we are certainly going to come across many passages that are going to talk about Christ's humanity, and you'll be taking notes, going back to your note file, and adding those chronologically, as we talked about earlier.